It's really uh, looking up into the future of what will happen when the uh, Cotonou Agreement expires in 2020. And we know a lot has happened since uh, this agreement was signed in the year 2000, so it's a 20-year span. A lot has been happening in the world, in the European Union, and also in the ACP countries. So we need to adjust our future relationship within a new context, within a new paradigm shift that has taken place in terms of international relations, and a new perspective. Uh, how will this evolve is, is still something that we are debating, that we are trying to um, research and, and trying to share ideas in common from representatives of all these regions and also with members of the European Union. So it is something that is still in the making, still in the process. But we know that uh, the whole idea of cooperation, trade, political dialogue will go into a process of transformation. Uh, some of our countries uh, that were very poor some years ago are now middle-income countries. Uh, so their needs today are different from what they had uh, a couple of decades ago. There's also the need to integrate, the ACP countries to integrate within the world economy. That uh, requires that our economies become more competitive, more productive. We have to increase productivity. We have to improve uh, human resources, skills, uh, we have to uh, improve the quality of our education, access to technologies. So these are all different topics that we didn't have in our agenda uh, 10, 20 years ago. And I think that looking at the relationship between the EU and our countries, exactly how can we partner in the way of transferring technologies, of transferring knowledge, know-how, how to access the markets, uh, how to attract more investments coming from the European Union countries into our nations, that can enhance our production capacity, increase our, our GDP, you know? uh, how can we gain uh, sustainability, economic and development sustainability, but also uh, in the energy sector, for example. So there's a lot to be looked upon. Uh, I think there is uh, the need to refocus on development issues and partnering in a way that can be of mutual benefit. Well, I think one of the uh, strengths of our country, the Dominican Republic, being part of the ACP group, is the possibility of having internal dialogue. So there's also some sort of intra-partnership among our nations that enables us to enrich our vision of what's taking place around the world and how it affects the ACP countries. So this internal dialogue among ourselves this common sharing of ideas and thoughts and perceptions of how uh, world affairs are taking place uh, help us better understand and adopt national policies according to those views. So this is an intangible, something that is not always seen and that is nevertheless very helpful in terms of enhancing our comprehension of the world and adopting local policies that will accommodate our national needs. So that's one thing. The other is also increasing our uh, internal relationships among the different countries, the uh, Dominican Republic with uh, other countries in the Caribbean, but with other countries in Africa, or other countries in the Pacific Islands that we didn't have before, that we weren't aware of the potential uh, of those relationships. But also enhancing South-South cooperation is not only expecting solidarity from the North, but also among ourselves. So we have different kinds of programs of exchange cultural, educational, uh, trade, uh, energy, etc. Uh, increasing transportation, uh, maritime transportation, air transportation, that we can connect more among ourselves. Exchange among universities, public libraries, etc. Uh, so there's a lot there no? that has been enabled because of the fact that we're part of a common organization as, the, as is the ACP countries. All our struggles for independence, our struggles for sustained economic development, for, for prosperity, progress, etc. We have the same problems in terms of infrastructure development, access to finance, improvement of education, access to water supply, energy. These are common problems to all the countries in Africa, Latin America, and the Pacific Islands. So coming together and sharing in these ideas and finding a way to solve all these problems that, I, that we call pre-modernization problems, because 
uh, all modern countries have overcome all these shortcomings in terms of water supply, energy, accessibility, housing, etc., is moving up the ladder into something different that has to do with high tech, that has to do with uh, uh, modernization in general terms. This is where we think we should lead. How can we uh, improve our GDP per capita? Uh, how can we have uh, high quality healthcare services, for example? How can we have broadband in our countries uh, so we can enhance telecommunications? So these are the kinds of things we should be moving on. Not only the low-scale agenda of, of satisfying the pre-modern needs of our population. So I think, uh, and this is what I believe is the wave of the future for the 21st century, you know? overreaching to more demand, a more demanding development agenda that is not just uh, poverty alleviation. I think this is something we have to overcome very soon. And some gains have been achieved over, over the past uh, 10, 15 years uh, in terms of re reduction of poverty, guaranteeing uh, over 5% GDP growth per year, for example. But then we also have to continue moving forward uh, uh, in, in relationship to our development needs. Well, in these consultations, we have to take into consideration the opinion of many uh, stakeholders, uh, government officials, of course, but at the same time people coming from the private sector, from academia, from civil society. So we have to listen to a diverse uh, set of opinions and, and options, you know, and views and, and, and perceptions, so we can enrich the EPG's understanding of what are the, I would say, the needs, but also the aspirations. Of, of all these stakeholders. We'll do it in Africa, we'll do it in the uh, Pacific Island countries, and we'll also do it in the Caribbean. Uh, there's already a schedule for each of these meetings that will take place between the end of 2013 and much of 2014, because by December of 2014, uh, we should present a final report with recommendations uh, in order to uh, try to lead uh, the negotiations between the ACP countries and the EU of what will come after the Cotonou Agreement expires in 2020.